So thank you for the time and place. Hello, my name is Ari Hermawan. I'm actually based out of Singapore. So it's a bit late at night at, uh, where I am today. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. So today I'm going to be uh, delivering a short talk called Be Faster and Safer with EDA. I'm a self engineer with Solace, uh, but today I'm going to talk about, uh, let's start with the context of uh, every company is a software company now. Right? So I have some quotes that most of you probably have seen many times before. And to me and to many people I've met, this simply means that if you look at innovations that are happening now uh, in the IoT space, in the uh, real-time dashboard space, machine learning space, or even anti-money laundering space in business enterprise, all of these are actually have a lot of uh, a lot of things to do with software, right? So it's it's good for us as software developer, but at the same time, this also means uh, it's a fierce competition. Sometimes it meant it means uh, winner takes all, and this forces us as developers to work faster, to move faster, right? So, but the the truth is. Uh, having new features or adding new systems or even the deployment of new features that we do always feels like this, right? Always feels like it might uh, nudge something else over, it might crash something existing. And most of the time, adding new features can be something that we are scared or we don't want to do it fast because we are afraid to, to change something that's already working, right? If it's not uh, it's not broken, why fix it? So that's one of the things that we heard also uh, most of the time. And to make things a little bit harder for us, a users on launch day is usually is going to be like, like a stampede like this, right? It's going to be rushing in, uh, doesn't care if you have the right capacity or not. So this might happen once, it might happen weekly, it might happen seasonal. So it, it sometimes cannot be expected as well. So if you can expect, that's good. But sometimes you simply don't expect uh, a spike of uh, traffic, a burst of traffic, something might happen at the back end. So that brings to the question that I want to cover today, how to go fast, uh, but not crash, at least not crash all the time. All right, so uh, here's the idea that I want to bring. So even driven architecture or EDA, can be used to increase resiliency of our systems, our modern and growing systems, to foster innovations. So basically, EDA is not something totally new. It's been around for, for many years. The technology with EDA is the one actually keep on, um, keep on moving, keep on improving, getting better and better with more, uh, more tools available at our disposal. This should be able to help us to you know, move faster without uh, crashing a lot. Right. So how am I going to do this? There's three key points that I want to, to, to take uh, to you today. Right. The first one is the idea that the business events that we already have in our core systems is going to be the one, it's going to be the same one that's going to be needed by uh, most of the new initiatives, be it new system, be it uh, onboarding new partners. And we should stop uh, always doing point-to-point -point integration every single time we need those events. Second one is uh, introducing of uh, choreography pattern instead of simply all orchestration. So not replacing, but adding, adopting a choreography pattern uh, with our orchestration uh, pattern that's already there to improve agility, right? Second, that's the second one. The third one is for systems with high volume or, you know, traffic with burst, they should leverage even brokers to be a shock absorber, right? So when there's a spike, the spike or the increase is gonna be absorbed by the event brokers. 
and at the same time guarantee there's no loss of request uh, while we uh, take that shock and keep our backend system uh, safe. So I'm gonna go through this one by one. So let's talk about the first case. Again, the idea is new initiatives. Most of them will, will need the same data, the same events as the rest of existing systems. So if you're in banks, in finance, it's always gonna be resolving around uh, transactions, right? customer transactions, maybe payments and ATMs. And uh, if you are in uh, retail or in e-commerce, it's gonna be about order created or inventory movement. And uh, also there's another example of airline industry, whether it's a passenger check-in, a baggage has been um, landed or maybe lost, for example. So these events is already there in the core systems. Whenever you add something new, you add marketing campaigns, you add uh, loyalty systems, they usually will need the same events. So that, that brings me to the first case that I want to talk about. I call this the case of the second chamber of events. So in this picture on the left is uh, the client, the user, the consumers could be partners as well that generates the transactions, generate the events. And in the middle is your core system. But then what we see then is whenever we need those events, another system need those events, then we need to do this core uh, core system to new system point to point integration, which is I put a dollar sign here because that's going to cost you time and money, right? The second problem is uh, with all this modernization happening now, you don't really have uh, connectivity available to the new platforms, uh, at least not uh, out of the box. You, sh you, re you will need to do some kind of, again, integration uh, to this new system or new new sites or new environment. Also the problem with licensing, this, this happens quite a lot when you have a core system, when you need to add additional uh, system to, to connect to that core system, there might be a licensing cost uh, involved as well. So this is the first problem that uh, I want to talk about. And the solution is what I call the case of the stream of events. The idea is you integrate once to an event broker, so or an event stream, um, basically on ramping the events or onboarding these events to uh, the so-called event stream, where the first system, the second system, or the third system on the cloud, they leverage these events from the stream, not from the core. So you don't really need to touch the core you don't really need to add more resources. You don't really need to add uh, licensing costs from the core systems. Uh, I've seen this um, happens uh, in a few banks, for example, they, they realize they need some data from the core system. They start doing uh, something similar like this, some with event brokers, some not, some with uh, tools like ETL, some with tools like CDC, but in here, the idea uh, in my case is use something like an event broker to create a stream. It will help you a lot in terms of um, accessing already available events much easily, right? Uh, so that's the first case. The second case I want to talk about is agility. Right? With uh, the system that we have now, whenever we introduce new system, to the mix, the existing ones will need to be able to aware and adopt to this new system, maybe even feed data into this new system, right? It could be a new SaaS adoption. It could be you're adding a new data lake or big data system. Then everybody else needs to feed data to that new system, similar like anti-money laundering as well, or simply you are onboarding new partner gateway that's one of your backends, right? Then the existing ones need also to adopt. Or you have new new channel for your orders. Or you have a new dashboard for marketing campaigns. So this changes uh, how to make it 
a little less uh, intrusive, a little less risky. And the, okay. yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, the, the idea that, that I'm bringing now is what I call the case of the grand orchestrator. So in this picture is something that we've seen commonly in the SOA days, in the ESD days, where you have a single or centralized brain or surface that have uh, that has all the business process laid out right, step by step. There's a couple of risks with this approach, which we've seen. Um, we might be trapped into having a sequence of blocking calls, which is not good, which is uh, also happens a lot when you see people start adopting microservices, but still having every single flow is a blocking call. So they move out of a monolithic where the blocking calls happens internally into something that happens externally, which end up adding more uh, latency and more, more uh, problem later on, right? And uh, some of these steps might be bottlenecks and some of these steps as well might be unnecessarily serial. Right? Some of those should have been parallel, should have been uh, externalized. And in our world, in event, we can say that that could be eventually consistent. It does not need to be uh, blocking calls, right? That's some of the risks that happen as well. And also uh, some of the changes or additions could mean a very wide deployment uh, impact instead of deploying small, small portion of the system only. And the solution that I, I offer here, all right, I'm gonna talk about is what I call the case of the best of breed concert. So it's not totally removing the orchestrator. It's having some orchestration and some choreography. Uh, choreography um, means that other system can react uh, based on the same tune or the same beat, but they are working uh, independently so i'm making it i'm making a diagram of three different flows uh, which have their own flow but they don't depend on the others right this helps to uh, again if you are adopting microservices it's going to help you with inner surfaces and um, of course with the correct uh, context uh, the bounded context and this allows for agility with the help of something we know as routing of events. So it's not as simple as all the events will go to specific services. They can choose like, I want to know about specific events. The other one maybe only need to know about just a specific area of uh, the events where it happens, or maybe specific product uh, that relates to that events. And this is done again by the help of event brokers or event stream in the middle. Right. And addition to that, uh, you are now easily uh, support late comers, uh, late subscribers, maybe a new application that uh, or new initiatives that is being uh, built one year after the system has been running uh, perfectly. So you don't need to touch the main or the central brain anymore because you can just tap into the stream and do your own thing. So a perfect example of this is you already have an order management flow, for example, you already have your logging and audits, but then uh, at some point of time, you want to add a new thing on top of that stream. It could be a specific marketing campaign. Maybe you run a campaign and you wanna measure a specific product performance. It could be a brand new uh, data lake system uh, that you just uh, purchase and you want to be able to get uh, or leverage the existing events that you already have, right? So again, not full orchestration, but a mix. And uh, I call this best of breed because you can have, sorry, you can have a blocking cause or orchestration in some part where you really need to know it, exactly all these steps happen in sequence, but the other thing that is slow, that is bottlenecks, that can be parallel, that can be offloaded to the cloud, for example, that can run on its own as a uh, 
choreography right so that's the second one the third one again is about the high volume or bursty system right we like it or not uh, so this sometimes can be a good thing can be a bad thing right probably you launch a campaign and the take up rate was uh, amazing right it's a lot of people coming in uh, word of mouth maybe it went viral in uh, social media and you end up having a lot more intake a lot of traffic than you have expected maybe same thing with partners uh, maybe the business went very good and new partners start coming in and want to be onboarded real soon or again the sample that we we've seen before user just time bidding into the system when the product just launched or in the last minute before the promotion ends or something unfortunate like one of the backend slowdown maybe you rely on partner system maybe you rely on some something from the cloud and they slow down and it will bring the entire system uh, down as well if not uh, managed properly right so this is the case uh, where i call uh, the case of demanding customers um the the spike of requests might be happening at certain hours and because of the backend is a bit, a little bit slow then it will uh, propagate back all the way to the user leaving a slow uh, response or bad user uh, experience right and uh, when the backend capacity become problem it's always a uh, poor experience now the the idea if uh, the case of the advertising advertising customer is when you have a, a system that be able to absorb this shock and, and never lose a notification to the system never have a failed request and that leaves a uh, happy customers and become uh, advocating customers uh, so that's the third case and um, yeah that's the third the three patterns that i want to talk about tonight uh, i'll be available for q and a later on if anyone have uh, coming up for a discussion